All right, so today I want to talk about finding wild mushrooms. Another bushcraft skill that you may or may not want to learn. <laughs> I'd say it's kind of a kind of a touchy subject. I know a lot of YouTubers they'll they'll get on YouTube and they'll a lot of times they'll they'll show you a bunch of different mushrooms and they'll say, yeah, these are the good ones to eat. These are the ones you should stay away from. But let me tell you, I've been in into wild mushrooms, hunting and finding wild mushrooms for a couple decades now, I guess. It's been a long time. And at one point I was actually the president of the Colorado Mycological Society for two years. I was the president of the Mushroom Club here in Colorado. And really the best way to figure out the good mushrooms from the bad mushrooms is to find a club like that and go out on some of the forays. And on the forays, essentially what happens is, is you'll have like maybe 10 or 15 people and they'll all go out and pick like just one or two of every single mushroom that they can find. And then they'll come back about an hour, hour and a half later and they'll lay them all out on like a beach towel. And then they'll have the experts sit down and show you which ones are the good ones which ones that you can eat and which ones to stay away from and i'd say probably the, the the best way to do it is to do the mushrooms in your specific area because mushrooms can change throughout the world as a matter of fact i've had a lot of people come over from europe come over here to colorado and they'll go out and they'll pick a bunch of mushrooms and i'll find them on the trail <laughs> and they'll have this whole basket of mushrooms and essentially what they're doing is they're trying to identify those mushrooms based on what they know from the specific locality in another part of the world. And that can get you into a lot of trouble. So normally what I do is I'll see the people coming down the trail and be like, hey, are you going to eat that? You probably shouldn't eat that. And then I'll dig through their basket and kind of, you know, throw out the ones that, that are known to be non-edibles. Uh, especially in uh, like in uh, I heard in California there's actually a mushroom an ammonita that looks really similar to a, a really good edible over in the Orient and a lot of the people would come over and uh, and pick those mushrooms over here thinking they're gonna be okay and it turns out they're extremely toxic I've seen unfortunately I've seen actually uh, you know, news articles where like whole families will die because they eat these mushrooms. So you really want to know the mushrooms specific to your local area and you really want to know the lookalikes. So it's actually the middle of July here in Colorado, the very beginning of the mushroom season. And the mushroom season is kind of interesting because essentially what happens is you'll actually go through like a cycle. At the beginning of the season, you'll find different mushrooms then at the end of the season wow i've never been over here in this part of the this part of the woods before take a look at this look at all the down trees <laughs> that's crazy look at them it's like uh, oh these are uh these are lodgepole pines interesting hmm lodgepoles Lodge poles, is, these are the pines that a lot of people use lumber. They'll use them for lumber. The other thing with lodge pole pines is we have the pine beetles that'll go through and kill whole huge, you know, they'll like sweep through the mountain and kill all the lodge poles. And then you have the huge forest of dead standing trees and then the fires will burn through and completely devastate everything. But this, this actually looks pretty good in here. It doesn't look like the, the beetles have hit this yet. So what I want to do today is one of my primary goals <laughs> on this outdoor adventure. I'm going to see if I can find some mushrooms. I've never actually looked for mushrooms in lodge poles before. So I always look for uh, pine pitch too. Take a look at this. We got some pine pitch. All right, I'm a sucker for pine pitch, so I'm gonna stop and collect a little bit. 
I always like to collect the little pine pitch. Let's see if I can set this down so you can see it. Maybe. I just keep a, a little baggie here. I'm doing a video on uh, the different uses of pine pitch. You can use them for, for glue and a bunch of other stuff. So this is my first lodgepole pine pine pitch. I have some from, uh, uh, I got a lot of it from blue spruces. And then probably maybe half of it from uh, ponderosa pines. But yeah, that's pretty good <laughs> for this little tree. I can't believe it. Not bad, not bad. I'm always looking for something out here in the forest. Just got a little bit of it here. All right, I'm getting distracted on the pine pitch. Getting quite a bit, actually. But I haven't seen any mushrooms right down here. All right, so this is kind of cheating. These all, a lot of times these will grow on dead stumps. These are uh, old wood mushrooms right here. This, I think the mushroom's dead. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, a, they call them shelf mushrooms or wood mushrooms. A lot of people use them to, to make paper. They're different products. They're not really edible. So once in a while you find those. But usually they're always there. It's not like seasonal on those. All right, so here's a mushroom. I finally found one. <laughs> Take a look at this one. i give you a little bit better light here. Right next to this pine cone. Looks like it's been there for a while. Ah, look at that. So this one's pretty interesting. You'll notice on this one that it actually has uh, those little pores underneath right there instead of gills and I would say most people say that if it has the the pores instead of the gills like that that this is one you could actually eat so if you can see that right there so this is what they call a swillus you can't eat these but the problem is is so can the bugs. <laughs> look at all the bugs in that one. And yeah, if you look at the kind of look at the inside of it there, the bugs pretty much it's like little fly maggots in there. Too small to use for fishing. <laughs> so yeah. Normally you could eat that one, but that one's past its prime. So normally a lot of the ones with the like the pores underneath like a sponge material instead of the gills I'd say most of them you can eat uh, Boletus edulis actually gets real big with kind of a kind of an orange top on it and uh, that one's one of the best ones but the, the problem is 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 um, there was a lexinum which is a different type of mushroom looks almost like Boletus edulis uh, but when you cut into it, the flesh is, turns black on that one. And a lot of people would eat Lexinum, but the problem is, is uh, apparently one year some people got sick eating Lexinums. And the Mushroom Club, after a while, <laughs> people getting sick on those mushrooms, they decided to say, all right, nobody should eat a Lexinum. So, but some people still eat them. And to come to find out, um, there's different... Uh, like subspecies of Lexinum. So uh, you, you'll actually see similar mushrooms, but they're, there's, according to what they were saying, that there's um, different versions of the Lexinum that, that you really can't tell the difference and you shouldn't eat them. As a matter of fact, up here, this is getting closer to my house up here. And one year we had all these mushrooms come up all over the place. 
and they were really interesting. They looked like um, kind of a, almost like a Lactarius deliciosus, which uh, stains green. It's an orange mushroom with gills and it stains green. It's a really good edible, a lot of people eat. And one of the traditions in uh, uh, the mushroom club is they'd have a mushroom fair every year at the fair. And what, what they'd actually do is they'd go, have everyone go out and pick a bunch of mushrooms, bring it back to the mushroom fair, and then they'd hire an expert, a mushroom expert, who would identify each and every mushroom that people would bring in. And come to find out, the mushroom that I found up here was it looked almost like uh, a Lactarius deliciosus, uh, but it had a lighter cap. It wasn't as orange. It was almost like an orange-yellow kind of a cap. And then when you when you broke into it, they would actually stain blue. And there's tons of them up here, probably hundreds of them in one little spot over by my house. And I brought some of those into the mushroom fair, and they said that was a brand new species never discovered before. So that's the thing with mushrooms. It's, it seemed like every single year you'd bring mushrooms into the mushroom fair, and at least, I'd say, at least three or four were brand new undiscovered species. So if you go out and you're just randomly eating mushrooms, that's another problem you can run into is maybe it's, and maybe nobody knows <laughs> on that particular mushroom if it's a good mushroom or not. As a matter of fact, one year, uh, we had a, I think it was a university or like a business or something. They, they thought they found a, an anti-cancer drug in one of the mushrooms. And one of the, one of the main goals for that, the, the mushroom hunt was to go out and find this one specific mushroom for this one company that wanted as many mushrooms as possible of that one species so they could isolate that compound and do more testing on that compound. I thought that was pretty interesting. All right, so let's see if we can find another mushroom. Maybe I'll uh, go up closer to the house up here. All right, so here's another mushroom, kind of struggling to come up over here. And you'll notice on a lot of your mushrooms like this that, uh, a lot of times the deer will eat them away and just because the deer's eating them doesn't mean they're good <laughs> so take a look at this one uh i can identify this one so this is a this is a, a rushula and the rushulas are really difficult to identify the species I usually pass over the rushula. Usually you can tell it's a rushula because it breaks apart like chalk. Kind of just easily breaks apart real easy. Kind of just crumbles. Has no veil. They're all over up here. The red ones, I've actually seen people use the red ones. Uh, they say it's really spicy. You can kind of use it as a spice. <laughs> but if you eat a whole red one, you'll get sick. It's like almost, almost tastes like a uh, horseradish. And some people say that you can eat the light ones like this. As a matter of fact, I, I go out on mushroom hunts. And it's funny when you're hunting mushrooms because uh, everyone has their own interpretation over what an edible mushroom is. <laughs> That's the other thing. There's a lot of people who pick up mushrooms and say, oh yeah, yeah, this is a good mushroom. And then come to find out, the, you know, the mycological society, they recommend never eating a rushula because you can't identify it to species. But a lot of people will say the light colored rushulas like this, you can actually eat even though you can't identify them to species. So in a survival situation, <laughs> maybe, maybe I would be tempted to eat a rushula, but normally just going out and, and collecting them, it's kind of an interesting conversation piece. Kind of the cool thing about the rushulas too is a lot of times the bugs won't get them. So you'll see on this one, almost no bugs. And you'll see that on a lot of mushrooms that on certain mushrooms, the bugs absolutely love them. Certain ones, the bugs don't like them at all, like these rushulas. Sometimes you'll get rushulas with bugs, but usually you won't. And then sometimes you'll find like the uh, uh, like the ear mushrooms. I can't. Even, it's been like 20 years. <laughs> I can't remember a lot of the scientific names on a lot of the on a lot of the mushrooms anymore. But uh, the, on some mushrooms like that, that you use like in a like an Oriental hot and sour soup or something like that. Uh, people go crazy, you know, people with uh, 
uh, with wives that would make the hot and sour soup. <laughs> they would go crazy over those those ear mushrooms. They're like, where did you get that? Let's go back and pick them all. And uh, those never got bugs on any of those. So that was kind of uh, interesting too. All right, let's see what else we can find up here in the wilds of Colorado. So up here in the mountains, if you're looking for Porcini, Boletus edulis. A lot of times, a lot of people will find them in a habitat where you find Kinnikinnik. It's a small, kind of a low growing, uh, it's a, an interesting plant. This is Kinnikinnik, it only gets this big and just kind of, it's almost like a ground cover. So a lot of times if you find this, you're in a really good area where you could possibly find some Porcini. As a matter of fact, uh, up here, I actually found some white porcinis that are completely white instead of red on top. So those are pretty rare. Every now and then you'll find them. And they get real big, like the, almost the size of a... I seen them get it like the size of a basketball. <laughs> really super huge mushrooms. But usually once they get that big, they'll, uh, they'll be uh, completely eaten by bugs by that point. Here's another mushroom. Found another, looks like a Swillis. Take a look at this one. Nice. That one you can eat. There's no bugs. And a lot of times when people say that if you're looking for edible mushrooms, it's, it's best to, to pick them before they're completely big like this. Usually once they get really big like this, it's a really good looking mushroom though. <laughs> That's looking pretty good. It's got a little leaf on it. But that is, uh, I just call them Swillis. Uh, I don't know the, uh, the scientific name. But if you look at, sometimes if you break them open, eh, this one, yeah, it's got a few maggots in it. <laughs> I probably wouldn't eat it. And then you never really want to eat them raw. You always want to cook them obviously before you eat them especially something like this that's really interesting if you look at they have the like the sponge material instead of the gills if you can actually see that it's really kind of an interesting mushroom yeah usually once the swills come out then it's much it's like the prime mushroom season and you can start finding a lot of mushrooms so it's pretty early still Let's see if we can find maybe one more mushroom. <laughs> we'll try. All right, so we're coming up on a, a grassy area. Hey, here's a little mushroom. Like this one right here. Take a look at this one. Cute little mushroom. <laughs> and most people will say, I know what that is. That's an LBM, a little brown mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a cute little mushroom but most people don't identify these <laughs> they just kind of kind of walk over them not even worth eating unless you're like a like a hardcore mycologist where you identify mushrooms so take a look at this this is a interesting spot right here so usually once you come up into like a grassy area like this you can see like a like a deer laid down right there or something kind of interesting you'll find a completely different kind of mushroom up here in the grassy areas usually you'll find like a garicus that's a pretty wild looking tree look at that one <laughs> it's, you can almost build a little shelter right there <laughs> that's pretty wild but yeah, I've been walking around for quite a while. Haven't really found much of anything else. I was hoping to find an agaricus so I could show you what an agaricus looks like. This is sometimes you can just look at the habitat and you can figure out, you know, if you're looking for a specific mushroom, like if you're looking for a porcini, you can go up in the kinnikinnik. If you're looking for agaricus, you can come down here in the grass. Sometimes you can do that. But as far as eating mushrooms. <laughs> I don't know if I trust uh, even a mushroom expert. But I would highly recommend. I would recommend 
going to your local mycological society and then joining some of the forays where they go out and collect everything and then identify them, show you the poisonous lookalikes. That's really the best way. And when I first started in mushrooms, it took me probably about two years before I was comfortable eating my first mushrooms. <laughs> you know, you eat the wrong one and you, you can't go back. You know, you can get really sick. And a lot of them, they'll just destroy your liver the, the first time you eat it. And some of them are kind of tricky too, because some of them you eat it, and then a the few days later you feel great. And then you eat a few more, and then a month later you can actually die from the, the mushroom poisoning. It's kind of like a really delayed effect from the mushroom. So you have to really be careful. But I kind of on the flip side, a lot of people will say that there are more edible mushrooms than plants. There are more toxic plants that are poisonous if you actually eat the plants. So uh, you may be better off eating mushroom <laughs> if you if you kind of get a you know if you, if you kind of can narrow it down to where you know if you have a rushula or an agaricus, and then the kind of the 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 toxic ones that are uh, uh, like the ammonitas. You'll know the ammonitas have a really strong veil, and a lot of them will actually have. Uh, uh, like uh, white white gills underneath the cap. You can you can figure out the death caps <laughs> If you know kind of the basics of mushrooms, then you can kind of in a survival situation You can kind of make your best guess on some of the ones that don't really give you problems where it will you know Like a garicus. I've never heard of an garicus killing you. <laughs> there are some that might make you sick a little bit But none that'll really kill you. So uh, for those you know, I'd probably take a chance at eating some agaricus. I was hoping to find one, but I couldn't really find one. So that's pretty much it for the mushroom hunting. Uh, I would recommend not eating any mushroom. Uh, some people just go after the puff balls because they're just a, a round ball with kind of a spongy material inside. It's probably a safe bet, but they don't taste very good. <laughs> what if I was dying in the wilderness and needed something to eat? Maybe I would eat a puff ball but there are much better options you know than eating puff balls there i actually fried some up there they're kind of nasty <laughs> like butter and garlic salt or something like that all right so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and i will see you next time